I think it's a tough operation. From my, from my vantage point, as far as I can see of the IDF, they're conducting it in pretty exemplary fashion. Very, very brave soldiers and very moral soldiers as well. Contrary to some criticism around the world, I believe they're taking every feasible step to prevent innocent loss of lives among the civilian population. Based on your experience in Afghanistan, what is the better way to combat Islamic terrorism? I don't think there's any better way to deal with this current situation than, than the way Israel is dealing with it. And in Afghanistan, our forces and the American forces encountered enemy who use exactly the same tactics. They use tactics, they use suicide tactics, they use human shields to protect their people and also to lure our soldiers to kill their civilians for the propaganda gain in the same way as Hamas. They use mosques, hospitals, schools as ammunition storage points as points from which to carry out attacks and fire on British soldiers. They use young boys of 14 years of, of age to throw grenades at our soldiers in the knowledge that no British soldier, like no Israeli soldier, wants to kill a boy uh, and therefore there's a good chance that the, the man will get away and if not then he may well get killed by uh, and, and the, the propaganda benefit of that to Hamas or to the Taliban in this case. How to avoid the killing of uh, innocent civilians? during such an operation? Is it possible? Well, we've heard from um, the Secretary General of the United Nations, the President of the United States, the Prime Minister of Britain and other world leaders that Israel should take more steps to prevent the loss of life of innocent civilians in Gaza. But we haven't heard from them what those suggestions are, which is really your question to me. The, the reason is because they don't know the answer to those questions. Um, I can tell you the answer to the question. I don't know of any way that the IDF is operating in which they could reduce civilian casualties. It is perfectly legal to fire upon a target, a military target, if it needs to be destroyed, even if there's a risk of civilian life there. There's nothing illegal about that. The crime is to place civilians around a military target and force them to stay there to shield. So I think, uh, in summary, from my experience, the IDF is employing far more uh, far greater, more sophisticated means to prevent it, uh, civilian casualties. I would commend the bravery of IDF soldiers. Mm -hmm. I've spoken to many soldiers down by the border just before they went in on, on operations. Um, they are very brave, they are very stoic, they're like British soldiers, they are prepared to fight hard and if necessary, and they hope obviously not if necessary, to die for their country. Uh, and I, I, I commend them and I also commend those soldiers who have died for their country. They've given more than anyone else could give for their country. I believe that in 2009 you testified before the Goldstone Committee at uh, Geneva, uh, before the UN uh, Council of Human Rights. Uh, do you believe that there will be a number two Goldstone Commission? Well, I know the UN Human Rights Council is, has been debating um, the possibility of, a, of a, another commission. Goldstone Commission was so badly flawed and ultimately was retracted, despite having alleged war crimes, crimes against humanity, which Goldstone subsequently admitted hadn't occurred, that I think people will be quite cautious about, about actually doing another one. Who is going to lead it? It's almost a poison chalice to ask someone to lead that kind of operation or that kind of investigation. I also think it's, it's very concerning because, uh, of course, the Goldstone report, alleging what it did, in self incited violence. Now, that's one thing if the allegations are correct, but making false allegations and inciting violence in which people undoubtedly have died, I think, is a very serious thing. Will you be prepared to give another testimony, testimony before the second uh, Goldstone Commission if it will be materialised? I would do. I would, I would certainly do so. I think it's extremely important that, that independent voices are heard and voices of expertise. And without being immodest, I was 30 years in the British Army and I spent most of that time fighting this time of terrorism. So I think I could contribute. And particularly, having been present during this operation, I've seen it much more closely than many other people. Uh, now, we, we would wait and see what the outcome was, but I would certainly be there in Geneva if it was ever published. Last question, uh, Colonel uh, Kemp. Why do you support the Israeli side? Israel and Great Britain are very close allies, on the military side in particular and on the intelligence side. Israel has saved British soldiers' lives and is saving British soldiers' lives now in Afghanistan. Yes. Israeli battlefield... B based on Israeli experience? Based on Israeli battlefield medical technology. Many British soldiers owe their lives to that today, based on Israeli drone technology and based on Israeli counter-improvised explosive device technology. Those three things and the sharing of Israeli intelligence, the sharing of Israeli expertise at handling suicide bomb attacks, all of those things have saved British soldiers' lives. 
Israel is a liberal Western democracy. Hamas is a violent, vicious, prescribed terrorist organization. Which side should I be on? Thank you very much, uh, Colonel Richard Kemp, and thank you very much. Thank you. It's a thank pleasure you, to be sir. here. Thank you, sir.